if I say to you, Josh, once you get married, the, the only way you can ever get remarried is the death of your spouse, mm -hmm. that's, that's shocking in, in our day and age. Mm -hmm. From Walking in Grace, this is the Straight Truth Podcast, Christian truths in an increasingly secular world. Next question has to do with marriage and divorce. Now we have a podcast we've already done on marriage and divorce, and we've we've heard your um, your perspective and biblical argument for that. We had another question uh, come in, and, and I think we get this sometimes as to how do we reconcile? Where it seems like major characters in the Bible say different things about marriage and divorce. Mm. So Moses in the law allows uh, divorce. Um, uh, Ezra, later after the exile, actually commands people to divorce um, because they were intermarrying with the other people groups. But then you have Jesus who allows it in one circumstance but then disallows it in others and Paul kind of follows along with that. So, you know, how can, how, how can a Christian just know what's going on yeah. and what to do when you've got these differing perspectives? Well, seemingly differing perspectives. Yeah, and, th and that's what I would emphasize, Josh, is they're seemingly differing perspectives. I and mean, there, there are some real differences in, in, in some of the cases, but what I'm thinking of is when you look at that subject from the standpoint of all of Scripture, there's a way, there's, there's a category for each of those different instances you just mentioned where mm -hmm. they fit, yep. and there's a way to explain each mm -hmm. one. So in the case, for example, of Moses, I think what you have actually in the law is the management of a situation already taking place. People are divorcing. Mm -hmm. And it, as a protection for those being divorced, there's, there's, there's a way this has to be done. So there's a concession made, and mm -hmm. Jesus makes the point, I'll read it in a moment, that that was due to the hardness of heart. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God's original design. Mm -hmm. It's due to the reality of sin, and it's, it's a sin management issue in the life of Israel under the, under the law. When you talk about Ezra, there's something else going on, right? Mm -hmm. they've they, you have the nation Israel, and they've disobeyed God's command about marrying foreigners. Mm -hmm. And so repentance calls for purity and protecting that people of God as a people. And so that's going on in Ezra. When you come to Paul, there's the acknowledgement that divorce is a reality in a fallen world. Mm -hmm. My own position is, is that the Bible does not forbid all divorce. Divorce is nothing that God delights in. It's contrary to His design. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't forbid all divorce. I personally hold to a more restrictive position on the remarriage side. Mm -hmm. So who then is free to remarry after a divorce? Mm -hmm. So 1 Corinthians 7.10, for example, envisions a situation where a wife might have to divorce her husband, in which case she is counseled to either remain single or else be reconciled to her husband. Mm -hmm. And I realize how some read 1 Corinthians 7 as Paul opening the door for remarriage on, on the part of those who've been divorced. I don't mm -hmm. read 1 Corinthians 7 that way. And for anybody listening to this, I would just say, I, twice now in my ministry at Founders, I've done extended series on marriage, divorce, and remarriage, mm -hmm. uh, at least 12 sermons mm -hmm. in each of those two times that I've done it. Mm -hmm. And all those are on the website. You can find them. And I would just encourage you to listen to all of them because we deal with all of these questions. But I think the, the uh, mo most succinct way I could answer your question comes out of Matthew 19. Uh, verse 3, and, Fer and Pharisees came up to him and tested him by asking, is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He, that is our Lord, answered, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they're asking a question based upon two schools of rabbinical teaching around the question of divorce. One school taught you could divorce your wife for any cause. Another school taught you could divorce her only in the, in the case of sexual immorality. They're coming to Jesus, testing him. You know, which school are you going to align yourself with? Where do you fall on this question? What does Jesus do? He takes them all the way back to the beginning, mm -hmm. takes them back to the very first marriage, mm -hmm. takes them back to God's design. And so for all these questions we're discussing, Moses, Ezra, Paul, mm -hmm. what we've got to remember is what our Lord does. Mm -hmm. That is, he goes back to the beginning. He emphasizes God's design. And that's what we should do. But we're always questioning, uh, we're always asking questions about divorce. I understand why, I do. But I wish the church was asking more questions about marriage mm -hmm. before people get married. Mm -hmm. 
and then after they're married? Are, are you committed to God's design for marriage? Because God's design is one man with one woman for life. Is that what you're committed to? Is that what you're striving for? Is that what you contemplated before you ever got married? Is that what you want if you're in the midst of a difficult marriage? But they pressed him, just like I know people listening to this mm -hmm. would press me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I get that, Pastor, but, but what about divorce? Mm -hmm. So they pressed him. They said to him, verse 7, Why then did Moses command one? By the way, they've just distorted Moses' teaching. Mm -hmm. right? Why did he command one to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? He said to them, Jesus, because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you mm -hmm. <laughs> to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Mm -hmm. He directs them again, back yeah. to the beginning. And he says, and I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And if you go and listen to the series that I did on marriage, divorce, and remarriage, I, I argue that what you have in the context of Matthew there when Jesus, when Matthew gives us the word porneia for what Jesus describes, sexual immorality, porneia, I think what he's talking about is unfaithfulness during the Jewish betrothal period. I think you have something that's uniquely Jewish. Matthew is written for, for a, a Jewish audience and he's saying that if there is uh, a broken pledge during that betrothal period, sexual immorality, then the certificate of divorce is given and the marriage doesn't go forward. I mean, the betrothal period among, among the Jews was as binding as marriage. So to get out of that, there's a certificate of divorce that was given. Remember, Joseph wants to put Mary away. That's divorce language, right. privately. The marriage has not yet been consummated. Mm -hmm. They're in the betrothal uh, stage mm -hmm. when she's found to be with child. So I think there's something uniquely Jewish going on here. And I think the proof of that is the disciples' reaction to what Jesus says. You have these two schools of thought already in, in, uh, known among the disciples. They wouldn't have been shocked if, if Jesus had gone one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But when he gives his answer, verse 10, the disciples said to him, if such is the case of a man with his wife, it is be better not to marry. I mean, they are so taken back by what he says. They said, if this is true, it's better not to get married at all. So. If today I gave the common, commonly accepted teaching on divorce and remarriage, people might agree with me, might disagree with me. Mm -hmm. No one's going to be shocked. But if I say to you, Josh, once you get married, the, the only way you can ever get remarried is the death of your spouse. Mm -hmm. that's, that's shocking in, in our day and age. Mm -hmm. I mean, that makes marriage, so, you, you mean one man, one woman for life. Mm -hmm. Now marriage is to be taken very seriously. So I would recommend, John Piper wrote a little book called, I think it's called This Momentary Marriage. And he, he, he uh, discusses all these things as well. I hold the position that he holds on that. James Montgomery Boyce held the same position that I hold on this. So if you get Piper, if you get Boyce and you read their teaching on, on marriage, divorce and remarriage, you'll have a sense of where I'm coming from. Also those sermons that I've done on the website. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels. So be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingandgrace.org.